Claire Pearsall, who joins us from Kent in the UK. Claire, good to see you. Good to see you too. So it seems like all Rishi Sunak really needs to do is stay in office, keep his head down, and if anything further goes wrong, he has plenty of forces as well as people to blame. Well, that does seem to be the overriding uh, belief of everybody at the moment, is that he just needs to be calm and cool and collected and not step out of line. But this is British politics. And as we've seen uh, across the summer, and in fact, probably across the last 18 months, British politics is anything but quiet and anything can happen. I think that this is a good choice for somebody to come in and be prime minister. I think Rishi Sunak will do a very good job and try and unite the party as much as he can. He knows the economy inside out when he was the former finance minister for the United Kingdom. So I would say that he is uniquely placed to lead this country through the current crisis we have. Yeah, you know he's going to be extremely careful. He really tried to show that in the brief address that he gave, not veering a word from what was written on that teleprompter. So given the events of the past several months, I mean, it had two resignations, it had accusations, scandals, abrupt U-turns. Could Labour have planned the shaming of the Conservative Party any better themselves? I mean, I think we really have handed this to the Labour Party on a platter. They have not actually had to do anything. All they've had to do is sit there and watch the Conservative Party implode with infighting, sackings, with poll defeats uh, during local elections. And what we're seeing now, yet another prime minister. However, what that does do for the Labour Party is place an enormous amount of pressure upon them to come up with policies to show that they would be ready to lead the country should there be a general election. And that's the one thing that we haven't seen so far. And a lot of the measures that the new finance minister, Jeremy Hunt, has mentioned uh, recently, which overturned the previous mini-budget, Labour Party agreed with those. So I'm looking a little sort of, it, it, it's quite difficult to see where it is they go. There's only so much blaming you can do. So I think they really have got everything to lose, whereas the Conservatives now have everything to gain. So now that Sunak will take over, of course, people are touting his qualifications. So why did he lose to Liz Truss in the first place, in your opinion? He won the contest among the members of parliament. He was consistently voted top of all of the candidates. It was when it went out to the membership. And unfortunately, it would seem that he didn't do enough to persuade the everyday members of the Conservative Party outside of Westminster that he was the man for the job. It's quite strange because I've heard him speak and he is very good. He is very clever. And Liz Truss, I've always found to be a little awkward. But it seemed to not work that way out on the campaign trail. I, it's, it's quite curious as to what people wanted. And mm. I think perhaps Liz Truss put across what people wanted to hear at that time, whereas Rishi Sunak was a lot more cautious. Yeah, I mean, it is politics, so sometimes anything truly can happen. You know, I spoke to one Brit recently about this and talking about Rishi Sunak. He said, well, he's supposed to fix the economy, but he's the one who broke it. Uh, that's one person's opinion, but I know that is shared by many in the UK at this point. Is there an argument to be made that he is at least partly responsible for the mess that the UK is in right now? Well, of course there is. If we look at what happened during the pandemic, it was as if uh, Rishi Sunak had a blank checkbook and was signing away big amounts of money to practically everybody. I mean, there are so many schools of thought on this one. He needed to do the furlough scheme to ensure that businesses didn't go bust during the pandemic and people didn't lose their jobs. And also a lot of the support that went to individuals whose um, workplaces had closed down during the pandemic, which meant that they weren't earning any money. So, I mean, there was an awful lot of support that went out there to people to keep the country running. So... Yes, I think that he probably overpromised and overspent, but also he had to do that in the national interest. I don't think we had much choice. What we now have to do is come up with a plan to repay that debt and balance the markets and stop inflation from shooting up even higher than it is at the moment. All right, Claire, excellent to talk to you. Thanks very much.